just got extremely lucky. There was this woman and her husband, and the husband got really sick, and they hooked us up with a free snorkeling excursion worth 140 bucks. Um, but the thing is, it's right now, so we're going. Oops. Time to go snorkeling. Woo. So we found out what this is all about. We are not prepared for this at all, but apparently this tour is three hours. My passenger set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. It's a party boat, so there's an open bar. Get some food later on. In the first hand that we play, we look down at a couple of snowmen. We're in the cutoff, everyone folds around to us, and we raise it to $20. The button folds, the small blind folds, and the big blind folds. So we take down a massive pot, $7. So in position, I like to raise my pocket pairs, um, any combination of aces or suited cards. You know, we're in position, so put in a raise, take down the $7. In this next hand that we play, we look down at a pretty looking suited connector, 9, 10 of hearts. We're in the cutoff. Um, there was one limper in early position. The hijack makes it twenty dollars to go, and we could do of we can do one of two things. Uh, I don't like a fold here at all. So we're either gonna call this or we're gonna raise. Um, if you want to put a raise in, you can rep some stronger hands, thin the field down a little bit. But in this particular case, I wanted to play a multi-way pot, so I just called for twenty dollars. The button folds, the blinds fold, 
the limper calls, and we're three ways to the flop. The flop comes and it's queen, seven, five, two hearts on board, so it's looking pretty good. There's an overcard, so uh, it's likely it hits the hijack range. The uh, early position guy checks it. Hijack leads out for $30, and I didn't want to blow the pot up yet. I didn't really want to get out of line, so I just call the next guy folds, and we're heads up to the turn. The turn comes, and it's an offsuit nine, and we make a pair. We also have the flush draw, so we're looking pretty good. The hijack checks it over to us, and we learned from Professor Priest last time what he should have done on the turn is utilize some pot control. We have showdown value now, so we don't have just 10 high. Um, we have a pair of nines. We have the the, uh, the flush draw. The front door flush draw could still come. So we check it behind to see a river. The river comes and it's the six of hearts. Awesome card. The hijack checks it over to us and decision here. How much do I want to bet? Do I want to go for super value or do I want to just put in like a small bet that I think he can call? 35. He showed some weakness by checking the turn. So I don't really think he has a queen here. Um, so I put in a really small bet compared to the size of the pot, just $35. He thinks about it for a little bit, puts it in the 35, and I flip over my flush. He mucks it, and we take down that pot. Thank you, small and big. We keep getting premium hands in position, guys. So we're in a really good spot. Look down at ace, king, offsuit on the button. The middle position guy raises the $20, folds around to us. Free bet for $50 and folds around back to the original razor. And he calls. Um, he's at about 165 left behind. And we see a flop. Flop comes, ace, jack, jack. Pretty good hand uh, for that flop. The only hands we're really scared of that would call a three bet pre flop, possibly, you know, ace jack suited, uh, king jack suited, but we have a king there to block that. The queen jack suited, possibly, ten jack suited, but there's two jacks on board, so it's All less in. likely. Um, he checks it over to us. I throw in about a half size pot bet, $55. There's $107 in the pot. He's got $165 left behind. Without too much thinking, he shoves all the money in there. 165, all in. I don't think we have much decision here, um, given the relative size of his raise to the pot. It's about $300, about $100 to call, and three to one on our money. And I think I'm ahead, actually. So I make the call, and I flip my hand over right away, show the ace king, and he looks disappointed. So that's, that's good news. Board runs out. I can't remember exactly how it ran out, but the ace king holds up, he mucks, and we stack him. That guy bought back in, and then later on in the night when he cashed out, he talked to me, he said, hey, uh, nice hand before, I had one below you, I had ace queen, and we ended up ahead on that. Hey, show me the winner, aces and jacks with the king. In this last hand that I want to talk about, I look down at one of my favorite hands in middle position. I have six, seven of hearts, and it already gets raised to $25 onto me. And again, we have a decision. We can either raise it or we can call this and go multi-way to the flop. In this particular instance, I again decide to just put in a call, folds around, folds around, and we're heads up to the flop. And the flop, I know what you guys are going to say, Priestley, how do you flop a straight every single time you have these suited connector hands, or these just connecting hands? But, hey guys, flop comes, and we flop the nuts. Uh, flop comes, three, four, five, two spades on board, and we have the nuts, the uh, original razor, bets out $35, and it's on to me. And again, the decision here is either call this bet or put in a raise. And what I did here in this particular case, I, I min-raised it. So essentially I, I'm playing my hand face up, telling this guy, hey, I have a strong hand, I just min-raised you. 
So looking back, I think I would either like just a flat um, and okay with letting a free turn peel off or putting in a bigger bet or a bigger raise so that I'm not essentially saying, hey, I have a great hand. Um, but I put in a min raise, go to 70, he calls and we see a turn. turn comes and it is a two. So now there's four doors straight on board and there's a possibility of the front door flush draw and a back door flush draw coming now. I bet $100. I don't want to give a free card now because there's a lot of hands that could make it there. If he does call, um, I could get away on the river. I don't want to give away a cheap card on the river to come. If the front door flush draw does get there or back door flush draw gets there, I'm going to pay him off. So I want to I want to punish him now, put in a bet, and hope that he calls it. But he lays it down. We scoop this pot. And that's it for this session. We cash out for eight thirty-six. Bought him for five hundred dollars. I want to show it. over three hours. That's three hundred thirty-six dollars profit. Well, not now an hour. That's a good session. Two more sessions from Aruba coming up. Uh, I might combine them just so I can shorten these up. Thanks for watching the vlog, guys. I hope you like the content that I'm putting out here. Please subscribe to the channel. You'll get notifications when I post up the new vlogs. Your positive feedback gives me a lot of motivation to keep creating these videos. So comment down below, like the video. Check me out on Instagram as well, uh, right down below right here. Uh, I'm not going to put the handle because I might change that again. Thank you, guys. Peace.